This is the land of Havilah, John 19a. In the last chapter, Pilate took Jesus inside and questioned him. Then he came out and told the Jews he found no basis for a charge. He offered to release Jesus according to his custom, that on the Passover he released a Jewish prisoner of their choice. But they shouted, Don't release Jesus, but Barabbas. Since the crowd was in an uproar against Jesus and wouldn't be pacified, verse 1, So Pilate then took Jesus and flogged him. The soldiers twisted thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple garment. Comment, purple was the color of royalty or royal honor, Esther 8.15 and Daniel 5.7. They were mocking Jesus' admission to Pilate that he was a king. He didn't say it directly, but he talked about having a kingdom. So the soldiers flogged him, put on the thorny crown, put the royal robe on him, and verse 3. They kept saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they kept slapping him. Comment. In Matthew, when Pilate gave the order for flogging, his soldiers called in the rest of the garrison. In addition to flogging him and putting the crown of thorns and royal robe on him, they also put a reed in his right hand for a scepter, knelt before him and said, Hail, King of the Jews, spit on him, and struck him on the head with the reed. He didn't go to the cross with the royal robe. They took it off and put his own clothes back on. Matthew 27, 31. All this was a fulfillment of Isaiah 50, verses 6 and 7, quote, I gave my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who plucked off the hair. I didn't hide my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord Yahweh helped me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be disappointed, end quote. After the flogging and mocking, verse 4, Then Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I bring him out to you, that you may know that I find no basis for a charge against him. Comment. Pilate told them before he found no basis for a charge, John 18, 38, much less any charge worthy of the death penalty, and he's saying it a second time. But since the crowd wouldn't be satisfied, he ordered the flogging, it seems because he was hoping they'd take pity on him. Since he did want them to take pity, he probably specified the type of beating that would leave him in pitiful shape. Jesus died more quickly than expected on the cross, Mark 15, 44, which supports the assumption that the beating was severe, probably with a lot of blood loss. There's no explanation yet about why Pilate seemed so weak that he didn't outright release Jesus, but there's a hint coming up. Now, after the soldiers beat and mocked Jesus, verse 5, Jesus therefore came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple garment. Pilate said to them, Behold the man! Comment, in other words, look at him, isn't this enough? Verse 6. When therefore the chief priests and the officers saw him, they shouted, saying, Crucify, crucify. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no basis for a charge against him. Comment, that was the third time in John that Pilate said, I find no basis for a charge. The Jews already said when they brought Jesus to Pilate that they weren't authorized to carry out the death penalty. Crucifixion wasn't in the law of Moses anyway, so when Pilate said, Crucify him yourself, he was probably being flippant, and everybody understood it that way. He couldn't think of anything rational that he hadn't said or done already, so he resorted to being facetious when he said, Crucify him yourself. Verse 7, The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When therefore Pilate heard this saying, he was more afraid. Comment, the Jews were outraged that Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, but Pilate was afraid it might be true. Jesus never claimed to be the Son of God in so many words, but he did use the phrase four times in John with the implication that he was talking about himself. And he routinely referred to God as his Father. Jesus much preferred showing who he was than telling it. Coming up, Pilate's afraid. The Jews have spooked him that he might have just flogged the Son of a God and he wants to take Jesus back inside and ask him about it. Verse 9. He entered into the praetorium again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Comment. According to Mark 15, 5, Pilate marveled that Jesus wouldn't answer. It was a fulfillment of prophecy, quote, As a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and as a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. Isaiah 53, 7. Verse 10. Pilate therefore said to him, Aren't you speaking to me? Don't you know I have the power to release you 
and have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power at all against me unless it were given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has greater sin. Comment. Jesus knows that the Father has determined crucifixion, so there's no use in answering questions that will get him released. But he did tell Pilate that Pilate's power came from God. Verse 12. At this, Pilate was seeking to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you release this man, you aren't Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. Comment. Pilate answers to his superiors in Rome, If there's unrest in Judea, it reflects badly on him. His job is to keep everything quiet and keep the taxes rolling in. But now, in addition to the threat of unrest, they're threatening him with a charge of treason against Rome. That could get him killed. It's coming down to either crucifying Jesus or maybe losing his own life. Politicians are the ultimate pragmatists. The safest and most expedient thing is to crucify. Verse 13. When Pilate therefore heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Comment. The judgment seat is Greek bima. A bima is a raised platform, often with a seat, for delivering speeches or making pronouncements. When Pilate sat down on the judgment seat, he was done discussing and deliberating the matter and ready to pronounce a judgment. It was here that Pilate got some more disturbing news. While he was on the bima, he received a message from his wife. The message was, quote, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him, end quote. But it was too late to stop the momentum. Verse 14. Now, it was the preparation day of the Passover at about the sixth hour. Comment, it's about noon. It says it's a preparation day of the Passover. This is another head-scratcher because the Passover meal was last night, according to multiple references we gave in the last episode. But there's a very good explanation. The day of preparation usually refers to the sixth day of the week, which is the day before the Sabbath. The term Passover technically refers not to a day or series of days, but to the Passover meal, Exodus 12:11. However, in common usage, Passover came to refer to the entire week of unleavened bread, which begins with the Passover meal. So as it says in verse 14 that it was the preparation day of the Passover, we could interpret that to mean it was a preparation day for the Sabbath, which fell during the week of Passover. This interpretation is reasonable and reconciles all the statements in all the Gospels about the time of Jesus' crucifixion relative to the Passover. So, in your narrator's way of reading it, today is the sixth day of the week. The Passover meal was last night. Jesus will be crucified this afternoon. Tomorrow will be the seventh day of the week, which is the Sabbath. And Jesus will rise on the next day, which will be, quote, on the first day of the week, John 20, verse 1. So it's about noon on what we would call Friday. Pilate's on his bema, and still in verse 14. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Comment. Long before in 1 Samuel 8, 7, God said the Israelites had rejected him from being their king. It's happening again. They claim no king but Caesar. John 19b is next at landofhavilah.net. John 19b.